Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to look at Jupiter's transit over to Aquarius and what does it mean for each sign. So I now welcome Shanati. Um, hello, Shanati. How are you? Namaste, Nav. I'm doing very well. Very excited for this transit of Jupiter in Kumba, Aquarius. I'm particularly excited as I'm an Aquarius lug Nash, so it'll be transiting my ascendancy and my natal position of Rahu in my chart. Um, so it's very, very exciting. And I think because Jupiter has been debilitated in, in Capricorn for a long while, this is something we can all get excited about, this transit of Jupiter in Aquarius. And so I I'm excited to discuss it for the astrological community in thorough detail. I think in the first part today, we're going to cover Aries through Virgo, and then we'll do a second installation on Libra through Pisces. So uh, I'm very excited and thank you for sharing this time with me today. Thank you. Thank you, Shanadi. Yes, I'm very excited as well. And I'm sure our community is and they're looking forward to see what's in store for them. So we can start with Aries. Aries. Excellent. Excellent. So before we get into the, all the different positions, I just want to do a quick Jupiter chant just mm -hmm. to invoke the energy of Guru Deva in our time together today. And then I'll discuss the transit and we'll get right into the different positions. Sounds good. Om Devanam Charis Nam Cha Gurum Kansena Sanibam Buri Bhutam Trilokshum Tam Namami Prohaspati Mom Devanam Charis Nam Cha Gurum Kansena Sanibam Bodhi Bhutam Trilokshum Tam Namami Brahaspati Mum Devinam Charishnam Cha Gurum Kanchena Shani Bam Bodhi Bhutam Trilokshum Tam Namami Brahaspati Mum Gram Grim Gram Saha Guru Devanamaha Om Gram Grim Gram Sahaguru Deva Namaha Om Gram Grim Gram Sahaguru Deva Namaha Om Gram Grim Gram Sahaguru Deva Namaha Hari Om Om Namah Shivaya Namaste Welcome everyone to our discussion, a collaboration of Dr. Arjun Pai Astrology and Shanati Jyotish. We're here with Nav and I, very excited to discuss this transit. So before we discuss the different uh, ascendancy positions of this transit, let's talk a little bit about the transit itself. So first thing we're gonna look at is when it started. So if you look at the position here, it transited out of the debilitation position of Jupiter and Capricorn to Jupiter and Aquarius very recently on April 5th. So that was just four days ago because we're doing the reading here today on Friday, April 9th. So very initial into the transit where we're sharing this with the astrological community, which is very exciting. So this transit has been a long time coming because Jupiter's position in Capricorn creates a very challenging effect where you have to work at least three times as hard to get the rewards and benefits of that Jupiter karma. Now, as we look at this position in Jupiter and Aquarius, even though Jupiter and Saturn are very often considered to have a neutral relationship, Jupiter and Aquarius tends to do very well as Aquarius has this karmic signification of the advancement of consciousness. And we'll look at that uh, as we look through the different positions and, and Aquarius and Jupiter both have this signification. So we're looking at a lot of spiritual evolution, evolution of our paradigm in which we're perceiving the world in which we're perceiving others. And in the Kali Yuga, there's nothing more important than the advancement of consciousness, right? Because we're all kind of trying to connect to that higher power, to that Devata divine energy. So again, this, this started very recently 
on the April 5th of this year. And so right now throughout the month of April, uh, as well as May into June, we're looking at a forward direct progression of Jupiter in Aquarius. So that's this first graph here of when the, the transit started. So removing that, we look at this second position here of June. And this is important to understand because it's a direct transit of Jupiter in Aquarius. And then it's going to enter its retrograde position, Vakri, on the June 20th. On Sunday, June 20th, it's going to go retrograde. And it's going to transit in its Vakri, its retrograde condition for a little while. So, so this is important to understand this 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 transit of Jupiter retrograde in Aquarius. Because once you get into September here, that retrograde position is gonna return back into Capricorn. So we're actually gonna have a return of the debilitation condition of Jupiter in Capricorn. However, because of its retrograde position, it'll go through what's called a Nietzsche Bunga Yoga in which it's debilitated, but it's also retrograde. So the debilitation factors and effects aren't quite as dominant because it also will act a little bit like an exalted Jupiter. A lot of times people, there's a misunderstanding with the Nietzsche Bunga Yoga that it creates an exaltation. That's not true. I've analyzed enough charts to understand that's not true. There's still a debilitation effect and it's mixed with an exaltation effect. So there's a dual or mixed effect that's gonna take place starting on September 14th of this um, Nietzsche Bunga debilitation of Jupiter when it's retrograde and debilitated. Um, so that will continue into October. And then Jupiter will go out of its Vakri, out of its retrograde position on the 18th of October, and it'll go direct again. So it'll, it's important to understand this, this direct transit of Jupiter going away from its debilitation, Nietzsche Bhanga Yoga on the 18th of October. Then we're looking at the next graph here. Excuse me one moment. So thank you. So once it once it goes direct again, it'll leave its stabilization directly in the Capricorn and enter Aquarius for a permanent residency in Aquarius starting on the November of the 20th. So there's a little bit of back and forth uh, throughout the rest of this year here as, as Jupiter will go retrograde in the Nietzsche Banga back into Capricorn. So it'll enter its permanent stationary position in Aquarius on the 20th November of this year. That's very important to understand because that's when we're gonna get the lasting benefits of this transit. The last graph that I have here is the ending of the transit because it's a stationary, uh, it's a direct transit in Aquarius throughout the end of November, December, and then January of next year. So it's important to understand that the transition of last year, uh, of this current year into next year is the direct transit of Jupiter in Aquarius. So for all of January, we're looking at a direct transit of Jupiter in Aquarius, February and March. It's gonna be a really nice start to the next year. And I think we can see a lot of positive effects happening in society and the advancement of consciousness as we go into the new year, which I think is a great way to start off the new year. And then it's going to exit this transit of Jupiter in, a, in Aquarius and go into Jupiter into Pisces. And again, Jupiter will be in its natural sign of Pisces, which will be the, the, the most benefit we've had of Jupiter in a very significant long time since Jupiter was in Sagittarius. And again, that was conjunct with Saturn for a long time. So we really haven't experienced this kind of positive Jupiterian energy that we're gonna experience for this transit of Jupiter in Aquarius. And then as it moves into Jupiter in Pisces throughout April, 2022. So this is very exciting. I hope everyone understands the, these different effects of this transit. And um, so if, if Nav agrees, I will begin to discuss the position for the Aries ascendant when we're looking at the Jupiter in uh, Aquarius vibration. Yes, let's start with Aries. What's in store for Aries? Okay, fantastic. So when we're looking at the Aries ascendancy, first thing that we understand is the Aries ascendancy is ruled by Mars. And the Aries and Mars 
are friends with Jupiter. So it has a functional benefic relationship. So before we even look at the position of Jupiter, understand that it's a very functional benefic relationship between Aries, Jupiter and Aries ruler Mars. When we're looking at the position of Jupiter here, again, this is at zero degrees, but we understand the house positions and the sign rulerships to be the same throughout the transit. We're looking at Jupiter going into the 11th house. Now, this is very significant because Kumba Aquarius is the 11th sign. So Jupiter for the Aries ascendant is going into the 11th sign in the 11th house. This is a very positive transit for the Aries ascendancy. Now, part of this energy of the transit of Jupiter hitting that vibration in the 11th house is this is a Kama Bhava house. It has a lot to do with the fulfillment of our soul's dreams and potentials. And so for a lot of the Aries ascendant, they're very progressive in their nature. They're very concerned with the advancement and this will help them achieve the things in their life which they wish to achieve. If that is some kind of spiritual focus, they will achieve that spiritual focus. If they would like to travel to a location, they will be able to travel to that location. For a long time in society, we have not been able to travel to certain locations due to the pandemic. Nav and I were just discussing. Now that we look at this transit that's hitting the chart, there will be an opportunity with this transit for the Aries Ascended to go to the places they would like to go to for that cultural enrichment. Also, both the Aquarius sign and the 11th house have indications for alignment with our spiritual community. One of the things that I talked about was the advancement of consciousness. A lot of times when we wish our consciousness, our spiritual evolution to advance, that's gonna be relative to the community that we're with. If we're not surrounded by like-minded people who think similarly, have similar morals, have similar ethics, then how can we really align to the paradigm in which we would like to interpret and see the world? If we're not surrounded by sattvic people, it's harder for us to be sattvic, you know what I mean, everyone? So when we're looking at this transit of Jupiter and Aquarius, it's more, and again, this is society opening back up and we're seeing society open back up here. And that means that people are communing with each other. They're spending time with their spiritual communities. They're having satsang together. They're appreciating the sangha of each other in their spiritual community. So this is something that's very beneficial. Also, Jupiter being the planet of guru, going into the 11th house of friendship, sets up the Aries Lagna to really develop a positive relationship with their spiritual teachers, with their gurus. This is a really positive benefit that is further emphasized by the rulership of Jupiter on the ninth house with Sagittarius going there. We'll talk about that in a second. The last thing I wanna say about this Jupiter transiting the 11th house for the Aries ascendancy, this is very significant because this is the house of prophets. Now, a lot of times when we think of the term profit, we think of money, material profit, but a lot, of, and, and that can definitely happen for this transit for the Aries position. However, when Jupiter hits that 11th house, sometimes the rewards and profits that we receive during this period are spiritual. They have to do with our reputation. So perhaps you're seeking some growth in your spiritual path with your guru, but due to the pandemic, due to some restraint on our ability to move around and travel, we haven't had darshans with our gurus. And I know if you're like me, you're missing that. You feel a longing for that. I know Nav is too. We have the same guru, Amritananda Mai Ma Amaji. So we're longing for that, that, that darshan. It's very possible during this period, you will have Darshan Guru. You can pick up where you left off before the pandemic and start to facilitate that spiritual communion with your guru or spiritual teacher. Also some other rulerships, we're looking at the Sagittarius position in the ninth house. This is the house of fortune. So again, I'm not the type of person because of Jyotish to believe in luck. I don't really believe in luck, but I believe in blessings and fortune. And when that ninth house is going through activation from the Sagittarius position, this will create a lot of fortune. This will create a lot of positive rewards for some of the good deeds or good moral ethics. We're gonna have a boom from Saturn here, I mean, from Jupiter here, in which there's gonna be a lot of benefit, a lot of positive energies in our life 
finally rewards for the moral and ethical activities. This is also the ninth house of religion. A lot of people due to the recent energies of the Jupiter being debilitated in Capricorn, maybe they've fallen out of their spiritual sadhana. Maybe they've fallen out of their spiritual practice. This is a great opportunity to get back into it, to start to focus on your discipline, your chanting, your spiritual sadhana is highly emphasized here. Just because I want to have time to get to everything, we'll also talk about a secondary effect of the Pisces activating the 12th house. This is a house of foreign relocation. So it's very possible for the, Ju for the Aries ascendancy position as this Jupiter is in Aquarius, we've been constrained to our physical location. Maybe we got stuck somewhere, but that's not resonating with where we would like to be. This is a great opportunity for travel, for foreign relocation. Maybe we'll move. Maybe we'll move to another geographic location that's in alignment with our astrocartography. This also is the house of ashrams, the house of temples, pilgrimages. So maybe we'll be able to visit the ashram that we've been seeking for a lot of times. We see a lot of connections showing up here for the Aries Ascendant with Jupiter's position, kind of emphasizing us to reconnect with our spiritual self, reconnect with our sattvic self, reconnect with our spiritual life. This is also the 12th house of the Moksha Bhava. So a lot of the things that we might have developed some bad habits, right? As a result of the past uh, period of the Jupiter in the Capricorn. Now we can start to let go of those habits. Maybe you used to be sober and then you start drinking alcohol. Now you can quit the alcohol again. Now you can quit anything that you wanna quit. It's gonna open up that opportunity for you. Maybe your eating habits have gotten bad. You have a sweet tooth. You know what I mean? Maybe you start eating meat again. With this transit of Jupiter Aquarius, with the advancement of your consciousness, you can let go of those bad habits and patterns, those tamasic habits and patterns with that 12th house activation of Jupiter going on. So this is just a little bit. There's a lot more to be seen here for the Aries ascendancy, but I want to give all the, the rushies equal time and vibration here. And so it's a really positive, functional, benefic, activating positive houses for spiritual evolution, very much activated by Jupiter and Aquarius for the Aries ascendancy here. So I hope for all of you Aries ascendants, this is helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shanti. And thank you, Aries, for stopping by. But uh, Shanti, I also noticed a lot of people, uh, a few people who I know has Aries moon or Aries ascendant, they've been actually investing in stocks and they've really been gaining, ma like making money in stocks or meeting, having more op newer opportunities with work or um, even meeting new people. And these are people that I know in my friend circle, right? So that's another one I have observed. A hundred percent, no doubt, Navji. You, we're looking at that activation of the new friendships, beneficial friendships that might be fortunate or blessed because of that activation of the 11th and the 9th house here. And then the investments and the return on investments like stocks, that can also be seen in the 11th house here. So that activation of the 11th house is going to be very beneficial for your return on your investments. And one of the things that you're going to see over this period of Jupiter and Aquarius is a general prosperous inclination for the various economies across the world that have suffered as a result of the pandemic. Right. So good times ahead for Aries. Definitely. Definitely. Enjoy. So next, our Taurus, Taurus Ascendant. So the Taurus Ascendant, it's a little bit of a slightly more challenging uh, transit for the Taurus Ascendant. Again, without a doubt, it's going to be more beneficial <laughs> than the Jupiter in, in Capricorn transit. But again, as you can see here, Mars is going to move on. But Rahu is hitting that ascendancy for the Taurus right now really intense. So that could take a little bit more challenge in terms of you know, we see the potential for what the higher self is calling for as the Taurus ascendant. But Rahu is going to make that a little bit more confusing in terms of is this the direction I should go or is this the direction I can go? Also for the Taurus ascendant, some people consider Jupiter neutral. I consider it a functional malefic because of the Jupiter Venus relationship, even though I'm a Jupiter and Taurus person. So I'm really trying to be unbiased there. 
So, so we are considering this as a functional malefic to some extent, even though Jupiter is really not malefic. Now, one of the things that you see for the, the Taurus ascendancy here is an activation of Jupiter positing itself in the 10th house. A lot of things that have been challenging for the Taurus ascendant of that Jupiter and Capricorn vibration. It's been very spiritually educational, but that Saturn Jupiter conjunction hitting the ninth house has been really difficult in terms of the spiritual evolution for the person. Now, as Jupiter starts to go into the 10th house here, it activates the Artabava for the uh, Taurus native. So this will create a lot of positive potentials in terms of the career, in terms of the life purpose. They may see some potentials of new jobs and jobs that are more in alignment with their Dharma. The thing about the Rahu position here is maybe they might be picked up certain alternative forms of income during the transit of Jupiter and Capricorn, and there's something that's going to be more fulfilling, more in alignment with their Dharma that they be, could be doing to gain money or for their life. And this is going to be activated here through the 10th house transit of Jupiter hitting uh, their chart in Aquarius. So this transit, it, it opens up a lot of opportunities for new jobs, new careers. Maybe you've actually been unemployed as a Taurus ascendant, during this recent uh, transit of Jupiter and Capricorn. And now you're having new work opportunities. And these new work opportunities, they're sustainable. If you get a new job recently, or as you're starting this new transit of Jupiter and Aquarius, I would imagine that you'll keep that job. And that job might be more fulfilling and potentially more lucrative than any job that you've had in a long while. So, so I really do like this transit of, of, of Jupiter and Aquarius as a positive transition away from that Jupiter and Capricorn. There's also an activation here with Pisces on the 11th house. One of the things we just talked about for the Aries Ascendant, it's also going to be true. It has to do with spiritual friendships, reconnecting with friendships, making new friends. And the thing about the Taurus Ascendant, the friendships are really important. This is, it, it, and again, usually for the Taurus Ascendant, because of that Pisces activation on the 11th house, those people that are your friends, they are past lifetime soul connections. And so your ability to reconnect with these past life connections, it's going to be fulfilling. Again, the ruler of the 11th house, it's depositing in the 10th house. Maybe they're coworkers. Maybe they're people that can help you advance in your career. It's a very positive transit. Now, one of the things that we have to be careful about with this transit of Jupiter and Aquarius for the Taurus ascendant here is the Sagittarius in the eighth house. The rulership of the eighth house here, the Dustana house for the Taurus ascendancy. It's gonna be particularly challenging because a, a lot of things of that Jupiter in the Capricorn transit, maybe there have been some health challenges that, that have come up during that transit of the Jupiter and Capricorn. And now that, that Jupiter is in Aquarius, it's time for you to deal with them no longer to sweep those health challenges under the rug or ignore them. You're going to have to face them. You got to see doctors now. You might have to have surgeries now. You might have to make certain changes in your life too, because with Jupiter and Aquarius, when Jupiter's in Capricorn, there can be some pragna parad. This is crimes against wisdom. Now with that impact of the Jupiter on the eighth house, those crimes against wisdom, they're no longer going to be serving you. If you want to have that success in the career, as it's relating to the 10th house and the success in community and friendship as relates to the 11th house, you got to listen to your higher self, the guru deva inside of you. You got to say, what is sattvic for me? Have I developed any patterns or practices that have not been beneficial during the transit of Jupiter and Capricorn? And how can I let them go? You know, we're no longer isolated and alone to the extent that we were in Jupiter and Capricorn. Now, again, Saturn's still in Capricorn and we got to wait for Saturn to come out of Capricorn before all of this loneliness is gone. Um, but it's still going to be a very present energy to start transitioning from that now. So it, it, it's really beneficial here to start to develop more mystical occult spiritual practices too, as that eighth house emphasizes kind of a mystical or occult evolution. 
So another thing that we is just a, a brief mention, there's a lot of energy here for the Taurus ascendancy, which has to do with material growth and success. How about your taxes? Because the eighth house is the house of debt and taxes. And so that activation here, it's very important that you get your taxes in on time. Because again, I know that in America, the tax deadline has just been extended, but it's very important here. If you're a Taurus ascendant and you haven't done your taxes yet with that Rahu um, position of the ascendancy, I highly encourage you to do your taxes right now. So the IRS does not come after you. So, so that's just a, a little bit of, a, a, of something to keep in mind here for the Taurus Ascendant. But for the most part, I really like all of the Jupiter and Aquarius transits, uh, even for the Taurus Ascendancy here as it's activating the 10th house and 11th house. So I hope that's all beneficial for you, for all you Taurus out there. Thank you, Shalanti. That was wonderful. So they just have to get their taxes in. <laughs> and that's a good point, right? Yeah, I mean, that's something you definitely don't want to sweep under the rug, right? Right. That's great. Gemini. So for the Matuna Lugna, the Gemini Ascendancy, again, we're not really looking at a generally functionally benefic relationships because Gemini's ruler Mercury and Jupiter don't get really along that well in my understanding. So, so it, it, again, the positions of Jupiter have some positive energy here, but again, it's, it's, it's slightly more neutral. It's still going to be beneficial because before that Jupiter was hitting the eighth house really hard with the Jupiter and Capricorn. Now it's moving on to the ninth house, 10th house and seventh house. So the houses, which are activated are a lot more beneficial than they were previously. No doubt at all. So as we start to look at the position here of the of the Gemini ascendancy, they're very intellectual and they're very logical. And that's a great gift that the Gemini ascendancies have. However, it's going to push them to honoring their intuition and their spiritual inclinations a little bit more. And so part of the challenge of the Matuna Lugna is I think about this thing logically, and this is what makes sense if I write it down on paper. But what is my guru telling me to do? What is my intuition telling me to do? Is it different than the thing that looks good on paper? Perhaps. And so you might want to honor your intuition here, even though you're logically rationally oriented as a Matuna ascendancy. Now, one of the things that I mentioned, which is highly activated here, is a lot of success and a lot of fortune and a lot of blessings for the Matuna Lagna, as long as you listen to your gurus. I think that can be said for pretty much anybody. If you don't listen to your guru, things aren't really going to work out. Um, but, but here for the Matuna Ascendancy, it's even emphasized anymore because the Jupiter is hitting the ninth house of the guru. It's time to get back into your sadhana. It's time to get back into your spiritual practices. And even though logically it might make sense that I need to focus on making money or I need to focus on this thing, you know, that, that, that is, you know, most important from an objective, rational Western perspective, but from the perspective of this transit hitting your ninth house, it's very important for you to really listen to the guidance of your guru. And of course, I'm talking about all those sat gurus there, the ones that are alive, right? You know, Amritananda Maima or, you know, uh, Sad guru or whatever your guru is out there that's alive. How about also your your spiritual guru, which may no longer be in physical form? You might have lost a little bit of your meditative practice. Again, that logical mind it can kind of fall back into you know focusing on some more intellectual things. How about if your guru is Neem Karoli Baba? How about if your guru is Parahamsa Yogananda? Time to get back into that spiritual sadhana and meditative practice so that your guru can visit you in the dream realm, in the astral realm. Rahu's activation on the 12th here in its exalted form suggests a lot of potential for metaphysical and spiritual experiences in the astral or celestial plane. 
This doesn't make a lot of sense for the logically minded, but it's going to happen if you're willing to have faith in it, if you're willing to believe in it, because we talked about the advancement of consciousness, your ability to be open minded to the possibility of things that can't be scientifically proven. Maybe you like physics, biology, and chemistry. I would opt to an open-mindedness towards metaphysical things and metaphysical properties here. Um, so, so that's really beneficial. And also not just your gurus in terms of the sat gurus that are alive and deceased. We're talking about all of your teachers. Maybe you've actually lost some focus on education for that Jupiter transit in Capricorn that was hitting your eighth house really hard. And maybe you didn't get a chance to finish degree because clothes were, schools were closed during the pandemic. How about finishing your degree right now? Maybe you have to think that you have to get a job because Pisces is activating your 10th house. However, maybe in order to have the best job with the most opportunity for potential success, you got to finish your education. If you're a college student watching this and classes have been disturbed, go back to campus. If you're a graduate student and your studies have been disturbed, go back to graduate school. Maybe you're even a high school student watching this and you have an opportunity to either take the hybrid coursing which means you're gonna be studying from the home or you can actually go into the physical campus. If you're a Gemini Ascendancy, go to the physical campus. We've had enough online learning, even though that's what logically makes sense right now, go back to the campus if you have the opportunity so you can actually have darshan with your physical teachers. This is very important to get, one of the things that's very indicated here is to get hugs, to get handshakes from the people that you respect in your life, whether that's a guru in terms of a spiritual being or a guru in terms of a teacher. We're also looking up the activation of the 10th house for the Matuna Lugna here. That, it, that activation of the 10th house does suggest some career advancement during this period. And again, something we talked about for the Taurus Ascendancy, if you have an opportunity to get back into your career, to get back into your work, and there's been a little bit of a break, get back into it. The last thing that I want to say about this activation is that it's totally activating the seventh house. This is the house of marriage. This is the house of partnerships. One of the things that you can see for the Matuna ascendancy here is the possibility of relationships again. And I'm talking about the romantic ones. So if you're a single Matuna Lugna out there, I hope this makes you excited because there's a possibility for love and romance coming back into your life again. But because of the Sagittarius activation of the seventh house, you're going to set up the best possibility for that to happen if you're living life in alignment with this new advancement of consciousness towards your sattvic moral and ethical potential. You know, again, maybe during the pandemic, we didn't hold doors open for people. We weren't as close to people saying, how are you doing? Hope you're having a nice day. Time to pick up those good habits because maybe the door that you're opening for someone or the person that you're complimenting is a potential romantic suitor for you. And so it's impossible to be open. It's, it's very, uh, uh, very strongly possible for here for you to reconnect with a possible romantic interest of the past or maybe a new romantic interest. And that's only gonna happen from you being a nice, kind and sweet man or woman. Uh, and, and so again, we've learned boundaries over the period of Jupiter and Capricorn. Now it's time that we've learned to respect other people's boundaries to try to reconnect and develop intimacy in our lives again. So I hope for all of you Matuna Lugnas out there, this is an exciting transit. That was some good tips on romantic, romantic relationship, Shanti. Well, thank you for stopping by Gemini and wishing you all the best. So the next planet, which we're going to discuss here is the Cancer. Now, the Cancer is ruled by the moon, and I generally think that to be a, a functional benefic relationship. I, I know there's some difficult aspects when we have a Jupiter moon aspect on each other that's always not considered the most positive. Although for the Cancer Ascendant, let's remember that Jupiter is an exaltation in the Cancer. So this is actually a pretty beneficial transit for the Jupiter ascendancy. 
I mean, for the, the cancer ascendancy, the cancer lug nest shear. Um, so when we're looking at the position of, 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 of Jupiter in Aquarius for the cancer ascendancy, it's hitting that eighth house. Now, this might not look good off the bat, but one of the things for the cancer ascendancy is a devotional nature. When Jupiter was in Capricorn, it was debilitated hitting that seventh house and Saturn was hitting that seventh house. So for a lot of cancer ascendants, this has been a difficult period romantically. Maybe if you were in a relationship before Jupiter went into Capricorn, Jupiter and Capricorn broke that relationship up. Maybe if you're married, you're separated from your partner. I want you to know, I have a lot of compassion for those people, for those cancer ascendants that have had those difficult romantic energies for this period. It's not always the case though. Sometimes it can create a lot of lessons and growth when Jupiter is hitting the seventh house, as long as both partners are willing to change. If you or your partner were stubborn, well, sometimes the Jupiter and Capricorn can be like that. Maybe the, your partner was stubborn and you had to make some positive changes in your life because you deserve better than that. So again, my compassion to you. But as this Jupiter starts to transit the eighth house, there is a lot of mystical, occult, and spiritual potential for you here. This actually, with the Jupiter in the eighth house, it might show that by developing a very strict spiritual sadhana, chanting every day, yoga every day, a proper Ayurvedic lifestyle, because when Jupiter hits the eighth house, if we're not living a proper Ayurvedic health-focused lifestyle, we can have weight gain. We can have addiction problem. You know, we can have issues where maybe we've, we've lost our ability to connect to the guru inside of us. We've lost our intuitive ability. Now, through proper application of a sattvic lifestyle, Ayurvedic lifestyle, and again, guidance from your most respected teachers and gurus, this is going to be a highly beneficial, expansive transit for you. Your consciousness as a Cancer Ascendant can radically evolve because the, the position of eighth house Jupiter with the activation of the ninth house, this is one of the strongest ascendancy for your potential for spiritual evolution. Now, because of the eighth house, maybe you've been stuck in a geographic location for a long while, and it's actually gonna require you to move a little bit, maybe travel to some different places. Again, one of the things we talked about with some of the other position, maybe your guru is in another location. Now you have an opportunity to travel and see your guru. Maybe that's not when we talked about the different transits that are that are happening with the retrograde in each manga. Maybe it's not till April when there's a permanent direct transit of Jupiter and Aquarius, April through November and stuff like that. But again, you will have an opportunity to travel for your spiritual alignment, for your spiritual growth during this period. So I really like that activation of the eighth house and the ninth house. But it does come with the side effect that if you don't follow a spiritual discipline as far as your lifestyle, what are you putting in your body? What, are you, what time are you waking up? What time are you going to bed? Are these things healthy? Do I have a healthy diet? Am I taking healthy herbs? Am I staying away from mind-altering experiences? If this is all true for you, a lot of spiritual evolution is going to take place. And you're, you might even begin, because of the activation of the ninth house, to, to develop a little more direct relationship with your teachers or your gurus. Maybe you'll facilitate a lot deeper evolution with that. Um, but again, Pragna Parad, crimes against wisdom, your biggest enemy here. And as a Cancer Ascendant, there's a lot of temptation related to our emotions, but a lot of times following our emotions doesn't always support us. We know that the moon slept with Jupiter's wife as a result of the desire for temptation and emotion. So you wanna be able to separate that kind of emotional desire from what you know is the moral and ethical right thing. And all the benefit of that activation of that ninth house will occur for you. Also, there's an activation of the sixth house. The sixth house is an Artababa house, which means this could be very beneficial in terms of work 
and career. But one of the things that we saw for the Cancer Ascendant, maybe during that transit in Capricorn, they had some difficult strife, some emotional trauma that occurred to them during that position of the Jupiter and Capricorn. As a result, they might be struggling with the lack of motivation. Sometimes that Jupiter in the eighth house can cause a lack of motivation. And so the success that's indicated financially and, and materially here comes from working 40 hours a week. If you didn't have a job, it might be hard to start working full time again. However, the most success is indicated here by working a full time job. So if you're a cancer ascendant and you're wondering whether I should be working part time or full time during this transit of cancer and ascendant, the most success for you is going to come from discipline and working a full time job. A lot of the things for the cancer ascendant, it can go either way. You know what I mean? If, if you're not living life in alignment, if you're not pushing yourself to work the hardest during this period, it might be a little bit of a tra challenging transit with the primary activation of the eighth house. However, if you're willing to give your work your all, if you're willing, willing to give your spiritual practice your all, if you're willing to kind of let go from some bad habits and patterns in terms of diet and other lifestyle practices, it will be an incredibly prosperous period for you. And it will allow you to potentially heal from some of the challenges that you went through of the Jupiter and Capricorn, but God helps those that help themselves. So if you're a Cancer Ascendant, I encourage you to help yourself during this transit. Beautiful. Thanks for stopping by Cancer and all the best. Leo. Leo, Simha Lagna Ascendancy. Now again, the Sun-Jupiter relationship is lovely. I love the Sun-Jupiter relationship. I love Jupiter-Leo. Uh, I, I, I really like this position here. I, and, and again, there, there is a primary activation on the 11th house, but we're looking at a functionally benefic relationship here. So part of the thing that we're looking at with that activation of the 7th house Leo Simha Lugnas are essentially independent individuals. Now, of course, this has to do with the sun's position, whether that independence comes easily or you have to work on it over time. You know, your ability to, to be the commander, leader, director of your own life. Very, very strong for the Leo ascendancy Simha. Now, as Jupiter moves into the seventh house, one of the things that for the Simha, the debilitated Jupiter and Capricorn transit, it, it could have been very challenging because a lot of people might not have had to work during the, the transit of Jupiter and Capricorn. Odds are that if you have been working, you've been very busy. And if you haven't been working, then that can be very difficult during that transit. But it didn't allow a lot of time for the fulfillment of your personal life, your social life, your romantic life. One of the primary activations of this Jupiter in Aquarius energy directly hitting the seventh house. Yeah, you're independent, but it's time to open up to this intimacy again. It's time to open up to the romantic. This means that as a, as a Simha Leo ascendancy, it's very important for you to not be too tough. If you're a man, to be stoic. If you're a woman to be detached, might not be the best energies for you. You want to open up to the possibility that even though you're independent, it's time for you to learn from your partner. Again, romantic compatibility is not going to work out if we can't take advice or learning from your partner. If you're married out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's all about your ability to digest and absorb the advice and guidance of your soulmate, of your spiritual partner. Any aversion to that isn't gonna be uh, effective or supportive for you. For the Leo Lugna, this is a lesson to be learned. And that lesson is coming for you very strong with your advancement of your consciousness because that Jupiter guru energy is hitting your partner right now. It's aspecting your seventh house. And that means for all intensive purposes, if you're a Leo, your partner is gonna become your guru during this period. Now, that means you got to bite your tongue when it comes to not taking advice. By taking that advice, by listening to your partner, you will evolve. You will grow during this period. It's going to be really, really beneficial, and it will create a lot of fortune in your life. 
Now, the ruler of the seventh house, your partner is is is, is it, the the Jupiter in the seventh house. It's bringing some effect to that Pisces in the eighth house because the ruler of the eighth is in the seventh. So this might mean that hopefully, whether regardless of what you're focused on spiritually right now, hopefully your partner is inclined to a more spiritual life during this period. If that's the case, especially as you can see, when this transit first started hitting, the Sun, Mercury, and Venus are going to be in there right now. Venus will move on from there soon. Sun will move on from there. Um, but but this is still a, a big transitional impact, which means, okay, all of a sudden, your partner is changing their habits. This will encourage you to change your habits as well. Because when we're looking at spiritual frequencies, the most compatible and harmonious romantic relationships are when two partners are growing in the same direction. If they're not growing in the same direction, they can go away from each other. And that's the last thing I want to happen to anyone who has love in their life. So one of the things that we're looking at here is developing a spiritual practice that's in alignment with the advancement of, of the consciousness of your partner. And if so, ton of romantic growth, ton of spiritual growth, and that seventh house activation is also Kama Baba. It's not just about love and partnership. It's about fulfillment of your soul's dreams and potentials. And even though the Leo Lugna is independent, what is a life of happiness if you have to live it alone? The Jupiter and Capricorn transit has been lonely enough. Let's embrace this new freedom that we have with our partner as the Leo ascendancy. So, so really grow together with your partner here. And then we're also looking at an activation of the fifth house because of the Sagittarius Rushi being posited in the fifth house. This would mean if you're a parent during this period, it is essential for you to reconnect with your child and develop that relationship with your child. Again, there's a lot of learning going on here. Learning from your partner. How about learning from your child? Now, I think for those, and this is a very mystical or occult thing that we're seeing kind of activated in the eighth house. A lot of times, a lot of parents, if they're not spiritual, we think I'm the parent and it is my responsibility to teach my child and I won't learn anything from them because they're young and their brain isn't developed and blah, 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 blah. Odds are your child is a soul that you chose as a child and that child chose you for you to learn from as a parent. So get ready to take a student position to your child. Now, sometimes our child, it doesn't always teach us things through their wisdom, although I encourage you to learn from your child's wisdom, especially if they're mystical or spiritual, you have a lot to learn. However, sometimes we learn from the mistakes they make and we have to help guide them as well. So this would mean that if you see your child struggling during this period, you want to show up and be like, I'm here for you. Not in a judgmental way, not in a critical way, in a selfless, humanitarian, Jupiterian, I'm here to serve and love you kind of way. So, so I highly encourage that. And then this is also the fifth house of education. And so it's going to support educational uh, endeavors during this period as well. Very much so. And, and then also this is a bhakti yoga house. The bhakti yoga house means that during this period, it's very important to do chanting, to do kirtan, to do mantras, you know, to, to, to do asana yoga, all spiritual techniques are activated here through the fifth and eighth house. And so it's very important to develop those practices. So again, I think we covered a lot of the positive manifestations of the Leo ascendancy position here, but also some of the challenge. But the key word here for the Leo ascendancy is if you want to learn, you'll learn beyond your greatest imagination during this period from your partners, from your children, from those that you love. So willingness to learn from other people and, and letting go of the ego here, it, it's crucial. It's crucial. I hope that's beneficial. You have a lot to be excited about, Leo, but you also have a responsibility here. Thank you. Well, all the best to Leo. Thank you for making these transit charts because it can clearly show 
the transit and they're really helpful. Yeah, I just wanted everyone to be able to see all the various activations, the planet of Jupiter, where Pisces and Sagittarius are, maybe where, you know, the different houses are showing up here, because there's so many different effects, and we're covering the, the primary effect, and then the two major secondary effects. But when you look at the other planets positions, maybe Rahu and K2 and Saturn here that we're not necessarily covering except a little bit here and there, it can also help you understand some of the complexities uh, for the different ascendancies. No, yes, it does. It does give us a picture. Thank you. So Virgo, Virgo ascendant. So the, the last sign or rushy that we're going to do today is Kanya, the Virgo Lugnesher ascendancy. And again, in part two, Nav and I are going to get deep into discussing the, the Libra to Pisces position. So please stay tuned for, for part two if, if we haven't covered your ascendancy here today. So the, the Kanya Lugnesh or, or Virgo ascendancy, we talked about it with Gemini. We're looking at a Mercury rulership. And again, Mercury and Jupiter don't get along all that well from a traditional standpoint because you have the logical, the rational, and the intuitive and the spiritual. Um, but sometimes I, I, I see a little bit of perfectionism too for the Virgo ascendancy and Jupiter can help strive for spiritual perfection and spiritual perfection is impossible. You know, we're not all Jesus Christ here. Um, however, um, that doesn't mean that striving for it isn't a beautiful thing. I see people who strive for spiritual perfection. I respect that. Just be compassionate to yourself because you may never get there. Now, so the vibration here when we're looking at the influence is that activation of the sixth house. Now, for the logical or rational individual, the Virgo Lugna is the sixth sign. So Jupiter moving into the sixth house, it's actually quite beneficial here because you have that house sign signification going on. So that Jupiter in the sixth house, it's in the Upachaya house. So it's going to help a lot with the self-improvement or evolution of the individual, your willingness to look in the mirror and work on yourself. A lot of advancement in the consciousness and success indicated for the life if you're willing to work on and grow. This has to do with your ability as well because of the Artabava significations of the sixth house, your desire to be of service in the work that you do. A lot of times the way that we make money, it's not necessarily service oriented. Sometimes we provide a service, right? You're a masseuse, you're an energy healer. That's a surface that service that you're providing, but are you being of service? Are you helping people? A lot of times you are, but the Kanya Lagna Dharma, for every Kanya Lagna, for every Virgo ascendancy, it's up to be of service. And so that sixth house position here, it's a great opportunity for you to make money and also be of service to the betterment of humanity, to making this world a better place at the same time. And that's what's going to be the most fulfilling for you as a, as a Virgo ascendancy during this transit. I really, really like it as the potential for selfless humanitarian endeavors during this period. And I'm not saying don't make money. This is a great transit as a Virgo ascendancy to start making money, but it's gonna come from selfless or humanitarian service. That's what's gonna actually create the most beneficial outcome. So part of the reason I might understand this metaphorically or symbolically, let's say you have two jobs. One on paper, right, makes the most sense and you think that you might make the most money doing it. Another one is more spiritually fulfilling. It helps create, make the world a better place and other people's lives better, but you're not sure if you're going to make money. This transit would show by doing the more fulfilling spiritual job, following the, the intuition here and not necessarily the logical that's what's going to cause the greatest amount of eventual financial and material success. So it's not an either or thing. The spiritual thing is the most materially successful thing here. And so again, being of service, working on yourself is highly activated here. There's also an activation of the fourth house from the Sagittarius. 
One of the things that we're looking at here, the ruler of the fourth is in the sixth. So maybe you're living in a physical location geographically or your home, and that's not necessarily where you wanna be. Maybe you wanna move to a different apartment. Maybe you wanna buy a house. It's very interesting. I know some people that are buying houses right now. They're probably Virgo ascendancies. So this vibration is very important for the opportunity of moving to a new geographic location, but Jupiter's in the sixth house of work. So you might want to move to a new home or to a new place, city, state, country, but you need the financial resources in order to be able to do that. This transit's very, very long. We looked at its full transit all the way into next year. So be patient with yourself until it's that direct position in Aquarius for the long haul and set yourself up financially to make that geographic or home switch for yourself. That's going to be the most positive. Also, the Pisces vibration influencing the seventh house here. It's up a, it sets up a lot, lot of opportunity for powerful soul relationships. Again, that Jupiter in the Capricorn, it activated the fifth house, but Saturn was there. So maybe there's been so romantic push and pull during that debilitated Jupiter in transit. Now it's the possible for possible long-term partnership. So if you've been in a relationship with someone and you're considering the proposing to them, if you're a man whipping out that engagement ring, if you're a woman not sure if your husband proposes to you, if you're gonna say yes, say yes and propose. This activation on the seventh house of that long-term romantic partnership, it's gonna be highly supportive during this period for the marriage, for the transition, of a romantic relationship to a serious monogamous devotion to that person. So if your relationship isn't serious and you're a Virgo ascendancy, you probably wanna make it serious during this period because that is a powerful soulmate relationship. So we're looking at positive activations of the Upachaya sixth house Arta Bhava house, which supports a lot of success with service and humanitarian concern possible uh, geographic and home relocation, but you got to have the financial resources and some really long-term success in, in terms of the partnership and taking that relationship to the next level. And if you're not in the relationship with someone, opening up to that possibility for yourself. So again, this is the Kanya, the Virgo ascendancy, and I hope everyone who is in Aries through Virgo enjoyed our lengthy discussion on the Jupiter and Aquarius transit. I'm so excited for this myself as, a, as an Aquarius ascendancy. And, and, and I'm just so grateful to have this opportunity to discuss the lovely planet of Jupiter and this absolutely refresh, refreshing transit of it being in the Kumba. I hope our spiritual astrological community has enjoyed it very much. Thank you so much, Navjitji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shanti. Thank you for your time. Thank you.